Then we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Robert, would you like to... Okay, I'd like to thank everybody who may be watching on our face, Facebook Live and those who may be listening on the you know, 96.5 FM. We're going to start our meeting and our, we're going to start with our roll call from our clerk, Mr. Jay Lestone. <coughs> Uh, Town of Vidalia Board of Aldermen roll call for a regular meeting of the mayor and Board of Aldermen dated May 12, 2020. Alderman Betts. Present. Alderwoman Dore. Present. Alderman Gardner. Here. Alderman McCoy. Present. Let the record show that Alderman McCoy is present and accounted for via telephone under the state open meetings laws currently in place due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Alderman Probst. Here. Mayor, let the record show a quorum of the board is present. Okay. Our first thing we business we have to take care of, you have the minutes of our regular public meeting from our last meeting, April 14th. For any questions, I'll entertain a motion. I make Except the motion to approve. Motion made by Alderman Dore to hear a second. Second. Second by Alderman Betts. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> right, number one on our uh, agenda, we're going to have the review of our financial statement for March 2020, and our CPA, Ms. Deborah Moat, is going to give that for us now. Okay. You're, the financial statements for tonight's meeting include the uh, balance sheet, the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balances for the nine months ending March the 31st, 2020, a budget to actual comparison by fund, and a detailed budget to actual comparison by department. In summary, the town has combined cash of $5.8 million, which includes $2.4 million in the hydro and $1.8 in the sales tax fund, which are restricted funds. Uh, investments of $3.8 million, which includes $2.3 million in the hydro reserve fund and one point five in the general fund million. Total assets of $34.3 million, total liabilities of $6 million for a fund balance of $28.3 million. The statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in fund balance for the nine months ending March 31st, 2020 uh, indicates there's combined revenues of $25.4 million, or 69% of the total budget, and total expenditures of $24.1 million, or 68% of the total budget for a total change in net position of $1.3 million, which is at 75% of the total budget. In order to provide more transparency and a clear understanding of the variances in the budget, I have included in your packet an overall budget analysis by department, including comments on the various variances between actual and budgeted revenues and over expenditures. The reason for the increase in the change in net position from the previous month is due to the higher percentage of sales tax collections at the end of March for the year for the year and due to the increase in hydro royalties. On May 1st, the town received 5.1 million in royalties. Overall expenses are lower than expected. Approximately 2 million of the 3.6 million capital outlay budget has been expended through March. 2020. The road improvements did not begin as planned and the river is up so construction is behind schedule and will carry over to the next fiscal year. This would explain why the combined expenditures are lower than budget. Uh, the annual budget for fiscal year um, ending June 30th, 2021 is being presented to the Alderman tonight and will be available to the public for tomorrow. The public meeting and vote on the budget is going to be scheduled for Thursday, May the 28th at a special meeting. Due to COVID-19, we limited the number of meetings to discuss the uh, budget, but the department heads did their part to help formulate a budget. The council members have all had a chance to contribute also. The proposed overall budget has only slight changes from the current year budget. The 2019-20 amended budget will be presented at the next meeting if necessary. The town of Adelia has not been negatively impacted by COVID-19 in a big way monetarily. We have purchased sanitizers, thermometers, laptops, gloves, etc. that we would normally not have purchased. Employees who worked for two weeks were paid holiday pay. We incurred legal expense regarding, uh, we have incurred legal expenses um, regarding employee issues that we would not have had. But all in all, the town has not experienced any hardships due to the virus. Okay, thank you, Deborah. Any questions of Deborah on her financial report? Uh, 
Deborah, she, she's done a wonderful job working through this stuff and, and working on a budget. Uh, and it, it's, it's, you know, you've done, a, you've done outstanding. We appreciate that work that you have done. Uh, one of the things that I do want to mention is as we uh, get go into, you know, making the budget, you know, available to our public. If you can, if you're watching or see this video later, we've got to come up with a better way for you to be able to ask questions during these meetings on any kind of item that we will be taking a vote on. And just to clarify, if you're in the public and you're listening, if there's an agenda item that's going to require a vote you have a chance to make a public comment. And tonight we have a couple of things that's gonna be taken a vote on. And I, whatever best, I, how does the alderman, do they have questions? Did any of their constituents give them questions that they, before we do that later on today, do you have any public, have anybody reached out to y'all for a question on any of our agenda items for tonight? I do, I have questions for okay. agenda item number five and six only. On which one now? Five and six only. Five and six only. Yes. Uh, do you want to wait so till far. we get to uh, Yes, yes. Let's you wait, wait till we get to those. Absolutely. Ones? Okay. All right. Anybody else is going to have a question? Uh, is there any other recommendation from the alderman how we can field questions for tonight uh, in relation to just these couple items that we have on our agenda tonight? I mean, if anyone, I know, are we broadcasting through the radio station as well tonight? Well, it's just it's just with people who might have shown up here. It's, it's okay. a limited outreach on what that, that can reach uh, for those people. Uh, so if there's anyone in the parking lot who's listening, they can contact one of the aldermen by phone or if anybody is Facebook Live and they can ask the question because I think we're all kind of watching it as okay. we go. I'll, uh, I, I'll actually give my number. If they want to call in on my number, and I guess we'll give them a stated amount of time as we do y'all want to go ahead and get those comments now or when wait till we get to those agenda items just wait till prayer. we get to the agenda items. Yeah, a lot give of them times. time okay. if they if we just made an announcement let's give them the time <clears throat> they want to call in they can call in and okay oh uh, a lot we, of times they don't know what their question is until they get to it right that's why and I will uh, I guess they can call in on my phone and I'll take that question and I'll read our uh, I'll put it on speakerphone if it is, it is a question related to our agenda item and I'll go ahead and put my number if you someone needs just my number 601-807-3298. Uh, now I will take a call when I get to that point and ask you if you have a question. If you don't get in on the first try for more than one person, uh, try back after you uh, if you're watching this or listening to it. So, okay, let's move on with our occupational license. That's number two on our agenda. And the first one we have is Brenda Floyd for Deep South Quality. I can't see what the name of her LLC is, but however, what she's going to be doing is opening up the old fish fry building that was the Butt Hut, and she's going to be doing business at BB's Fish Fry at 1100 Carter Street here in Vidalia. And uh, is there any questions on that? <clears throat> yes, sir. I make the motion to approve as applied. Motion, second. motion made by Alderman Dore. Second. Go ahead, second. Second. Second by Alderman Probst. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. All. <laughs> All eyes. Uh, the next thing we have is going to be uh, change of ownership only on the. Uh, I can't say her name, but it's, it's, it looks like Nan Nanwa Bernard uh, is going to be changing. Uh, she's going to be taking over the Vital Nutrition LLC, and that's at 1642 Carter Street in Bidet, Louisiana. Do I hear a motion to accept that ownership? Change. I make that motion. Motion made by Alderman Gardner. Do I hear a second? Second. Second bottom approach. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. That's all of our applications for occupational license. We have a couple sign ordinance. Uh, Mayor, sign. Before, you, before you get that far, does anybody know Ms. Floyd's? It's Deep South Quality Something LLC. Looks like INSP, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's uh, Deep South Quality Inspection LLC. Inspection. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council. Okay. First sign application we have, and you have it attached, is BB's Fish Fry. Uh, and you see that that's going to be their their logo. Any that. questions on that? We're most we entertain that, that sign. I'm sure to go on the existing sign that's up there. I make a motion. Motion made by Alderman Betts. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Alderman Post. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, we have a sign for Tensaw Community Gross. Health Center doing business as Vidalia Community Health Center. That sign is already up and it's uh, you'll see a 
a picture of it on your second page there. Is there any questions on that? There's basically two signs I noticed when we went by. There's by, there's a sign in the parking lot, but there's also a sign on the building. On the building itself? Aren't so they both the same? two signs. I think they're actually the same, but there are two signs. Okay. One, one on the face of the building and one out in the parking lot. So, okay. so they should the same, same sign. Now. And that's what their application, they're asking for two. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's what they said two. I didn't see the two, but on, on location signs in the parking lot and then one in front. Yeah, but there's two of them either way at the same signs. Yeah. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Alderman Gardner. No, here's a second. Second. Thank you by Alderman Betts. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you all. Okay, next thing we have is we're going to be introducing an ordinance adopting the operating budget of revenues and expenses for the town of Bidet, Louisiana for the fiscal year 2020 and 21. This is not an action item, it's just the introduction of this ordinance and all the uh, advertising and so forth will be uh, forthcoming as well as any residents who are wanting a copy of this budget can get in touch with us, we'll make sure that we'll make it available to them. So, uh, let the record reflect that introduction. Number five, board discussion and vote on the resolution. Mayor, do, Excuse me. Have we decided on the, the date uh, that the public hearing is going to be held so we can get the notice of introduction published. Did you say March the 27th? March 28th. May, 28th. May 28th. I mean, uh, May 28th. May 28th. Sorry. And I, it's at six, uh, six o'clock, right? Yeah. Is that what we, is that what we 5 30, said? 5.30, 6, whatever. What is, whatever what is the board? It's good with uh, y'all. You know, it rips the 6 5 or 6? 6. 6 o'clock. Okay. Good. March. Okay. Thank that you. Would be May, not March. Yeah. Okay. Number five on our agenda is board discussion and vote on a resolution authorizing the town of Adaya to prepare and submit a pre application to the statewide flood control program for assistance in the implementation of a project for the purpose of reducing existing flood damages providing for the necessary documentation of said flood damages and providing for other related matters in connection with therewith. And what those measures are is a pumping station in the slough area uh, is what this project is. And so uh, I'll open it up to the board for any discussion. Um, first question I have is, someone asked how long is this, uh, if approved, how long is this application process going to take? That's a good question. I, it's, first, it's got to get funded. It's got to go through the state. And of course, they're having uh, I, their state offices are going to open up Friday as well. However, what is going to be the procedure? Alderman Gardner, all I know is that we were given a deadline to uh, DOT has some money, and we were given this uh, deadline to get this in. And so we we jumped through hoops to get this because this is something we know we had to do anyway. And here was an opportunity, and this certainly qualifies for those funding for those funds. And we thought we should jump on that, and we pushed through an application, and uh, we feel very good about it. If they, if they're going to be doing uh, funding some of these projects, this would certainly be one of them. Uh, second question on item number five: How long have we known about this application, and why are we just now applying? Because we just got an email last month about it, and they gave us a deadline. They actually extended the deadline, but we we had it before the deadline. That's why. What, what was the deadline? Uh, May 29th is the deadline. May what? May 29th yeah. was what they extended it to. Yeah, that was extended to a while. Yeah. Um, the last question was, what's the percentage of assurance that this will possibly go through? And if not, what about the special project money? We will have enough project money and the hydro monies to do it, Robert, if that's what the people and, and y'all elect to do. However, you know, it, if I had a crystal ball, I could tell you what, what if I can tell you whatever committees have to approve that, I, I, I don't have the answer to that. We're, we're, we're optimistic that we're going we're to try everything we can to get it. But to tell you what, uh, whatever committee, the DOT has to use their, their approval process, I can't, I can't answer for them. All I can tell you is we're, we're doing everything we can to get it and get the funding for it. Is this going to be the same kind of, uh, like you were talking about, is this a fund where it's put in a where the other people have funds going into the same projects, we may get some or we may not. There's going to be, it's, there's, yeah, this is opened up to the state. It's opened up the state line, correct? Yes. It's not just us, it's, it's a lot us. of people, so we so, may get some, we may not. This is it's just like idea. those this other is. funds that we're still waiting on, correct? 
Maybe, that's correct. Right? That's correct. We hadn't but, got. But this is, uh, I mean, when, when they have this put out there, and this was, was certain, something that's certainly qualified for those funds, we would be remiss if we didn't jump on that and try to get those funds. Uh, now, let me say this. If they fund this project, we won't be have an opportunity to get any funds for anything similar to that from FEMA for that particular project. So uh, this was something that would be, hopefully we'll have a, a pretty quick turnaround as far as response or answer to. But if it, it does, it's not satisfactory. Uh, my thoughts are that we have enough money in our the, uh, the hydro project money that we could fund this if the board and the residents want to uh, make that a priority. Uh, also, we'll be, you know, the new budget reflects that we're going to be looking at probably, uh, and I'll say this, but right now we have 1.1 million in the project money. Is that right, Deborah? Is it 1.1? Is that project money for hydro? Um, Should be. I guess so. yeah. It's 1.1. Well, we're fixing to, once this new fiscal year starts, we'll be adding somewhere around 1.2 million to that. So you're looking at over $2 million in project money that I think we, you know, should really consider that. The other 1.1 to 1.2 million is going to be in a rebate to our resident, our electric uh, consumers, uh, for a rebate this year, and that's I'm excited about that. And that's going to be a big help to people, and and I'm, I'm so Robert. One way or another, to answer your question as quick as we can get this done. Yes, we will. But if we can get funding from from DOT, I think we should certainly jump on that. And I think the, you know, I mean, I really think the nature of Alderman Gardner's questions are just the importance of it. One way right. or another, we want to get this right. done. I think um, it's very much And needed. this is like Been the needed. questions that I get from the constituents yeah. of, that are, uh, evolve around in that district. Right. <clears throat> so I couldn't give them the answers because I didn't know, so that's why I asked them tonight. Now, you kind of touched, Mayor, on the, the FEMA funds and the GOSA funds on this. Will this application... <clears throat> not the approval of but just the application in and of itself will that negate the applications we already have in for the FEMA and GOSEF monies? FEMA and GOSEF money right now does not involve the pumping station. That's okay. money on direct damages that were done from the flood that we're negotiating with now. Mm -hmm. We've been approved for a lot of that. Uh, we're negotiating some other things uh, but they've already approved some that we're just waiting on getting it finalized. We're working I think what every two weeks with, with GOSEF and FEMA uh, to get these things done and this is strictly mitigating monies back that we were having on street projects sewer projects right. and and uh, some of those other things that we're trying to get this is going to require it's called brick uh, is what we're trying to work with now with FEMA on pre mitigation uh, disaster funds to if we didn't get the DOT money to try to get our stuff at the riverfront to stop the flooding and you know some kind of temporary permanent barrier to keep the river from coming up and getting our riverfront. Uh, it's called brick. They're working on it now through, uh, through, the, through the federal government to get this uh, setting the guidelines on, on what you have to go through in the application process to get those monies. That's being worked on now. So uh, the, what we're working on now with FEMA is strictly with, with flood related. Yes, Alderman McCoy? If someone could tell me that time frame, I'll, I'll be glad to listen to them. But dealing with federal government and time frames has is, is been pretty frustrating at best uh, on getting any kind of nailing them down on when you're going to get paid and when that's, uh, the funding's going to happen. So, uh, But all I can tell you is we will, we will stay on it on top of it to try to you know speed it up and stay in touch with I think we've got some good contact now, Alderman McCoy, with uh, FEMA and GOSEF now on, on trying to stay on uh, where we're at in, in the process on this whole thing. We've, we've really developed a good relationship with them uh, on first name basis with a lot of the ladies who are are, are representative of us uh, for our, our area with FEMA and GOSEF. So. I'm concerned on the application that it looks as though number seven may have been highlighted in the color copy, but there's no information there. Is this application that we're voting on, is this in complete form? No, that, 
Heather had this, she's still working on putting information together. Uh, in fact, we had uh, Robert, Alderman Gardner, she you know, provided some photos and some dates and some addresses of residents that were affected by this. Mm -hmm. And she was waiting to gather that information, so that's what's going to go that's in that. The, this isn't a complete application. And she'll have that there, with it. There's photo evidence. There's a lot of other things that we were still compiling to get it done because <coughs> the deadline was going to come before she's pulled all this together to, get to make the May 29th deadline, but it will be made. But this is, this is the, uh, the nuts and bolts of it here for sure. Any other questions? Is this something that requires public hearing at all? Since this is a vote, this is not a public comment. Okay, and I'll make the motion. Okay, motion is made to. Uh, I second that motion. Okay, second made by Alderman Gardner. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. The last item on our agenda is the board discussion and vote on a resolution to authorize the town of Adelia to execute and deliver to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which is called FERC, an application for the partial transfer of the license for the operation of the Sidney A. Murray Jr. Hydroelectric Station and to authorize the mayor to enter into and execute the application and any and all documents necessary in connection therewith. Okay, any questions on that particular one? We, uh, this is basically no negotiation for him as far as negotiating in the contract it's just more of a transfer like this this is a trans that. this is a transfer this was a negotiating between uh brookfield with some of the uh unnamed owners of the hydro plant with catalyst and this is them basically making a transfer any kind of transfer like that has to go to FERC for approval and we're a co-licensee with catalyst so we we would have to approve that transfer and it does not affect Bidalia's position. It does not affect our, our present uh, position or our future position as it relates to the hydro. And this is strictly a formality. Now, we didn't cautiously, I mean, just show up and do this. This this was announced to us. The CEO with Brookfield came in. And Brookfield, by the way, is a very, very large company. They 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 are a very strong company. Uh, they, are, they are the managing uh, uh, company of the hydro now. They manage our hydro. They own currently, Brookfield itself owns over 200 hydro plants in the world. They own, I can't remember, and hundreds of solar, uh, solar uh, facilities. They own several windmill facilities. And this is a very strong company. They are basically probably going to have a controlling interest in Catalyst, but we're still a co licensee, and that won't change anything. So, but they, they are going to do this and, and, and basically assume ownership of catalyst i think okay one other thing is as far as the uh, just so everybody feel good about it is that nothing's changed as far as our uh contract that we have or anything absolutely nothing. not and that's that's one of the things when they first came to us it's been six to seven or eight months ago and when they did that you know we all looked at each other and we're like and we immediately hired mcglinchy stafford out of baton rouge which is a very very reputable one of the most reputable in the state and really good in contract law and public uh, public works to review this and review the sale and they have been working with us along with our council and we've worked uh, many hours on making sure that we're protected and everything is good I feel completely uh, good about the whole situation and Brookfield has been a very good partner so far matter of fact they're the ones that gave us the funds to to make the city Murray you know museum there in our convention center so one other, one other thing, like, like we talked about, the uh, the reason they're doing this, we assume, is the fact with the revenues more coming to the city of Adelia, the shareholders are losing, not losing, but not getting as much, and we feel, you feel, and we talked about it, now that we're getting more, they're getting less, they're selling and making those transfers. Mm -hmm. That's one reason this is all taking place. In an assumption. It could, and, and, and an assumption. That's an assumption, and, and because you, we're going to be grabbing more of it than we have in the past. And, and uh, yeah, we're going to be we're going to see a lot more income, and in the future now, this you know we're right now to give you an example, the day is buying six percent of that generation from the hydro, Energy of Louisiana is buying the other ninety four percent. We're bound by law. We're paying one hundred and fifty dollars a megawatt for that for that generation right now. Market is only bearing around $30 to $40 a megawatt 
Uh, and so you can see right. that you know when that contract ends, which is going to be it's going to be uh, it's going to be de December 31st of 2031. Just for those people who are curious, 2031 is when it ends. Now, in 2029. Uh, Cavus would have to ask Bidet or send a letter uh, to Bidet in the writing, what are your plans to do with your option to purchase in 2031 or 32, which, which would be Jan uh, January 1st. And I think discussions, and that's not very far off. Mm -hmm. And I think we, uh, McGlinchey Stafford, I think will be a good company for us to move forward with and stay in contact with as whoever's going to be mayor during the future, in the future to make sure that Bidet is, you know, is protected during this time and also whoever's going to be here in the future to carry that relationship on and make some good sound uh, decisions on who's going to be the owner of this thing in 2031 or 32. So uh, again, this does not change anything of our position. In fact, I think it solidifies it because Brookfield is a very strong company and renewable, that's what they deal with. They deal in strictly, you know, the renewable energy and, and they are very, very strong in that, in that market. And I, I, I see it as a plus. I really do. Right. Other than that, uh, we just need to be prepared to do our part whenever that 2031 gets here. I was going to see if anybody else has a comment. Alderman McCoy, if anybody else has some more comments on it. Uh, so no negative um, impact from them having a larger amount of shares than we would hold. Well, we're just a co-licensee with them, okay? Catalyst is actually the owner of the station. We're co-licensee. Basically, they, uh, uh, they were a seller. We were the purchaser, basically. And we have a, it's a co-licensee agreement. And that's, there's, a, there's an agreement drawn up. And it was in 1985 and it was drawn up. It was amended in 1988. It was amended and it had some different things changed in it. And it only made it better for us during that time. Uh, I won't go into the details of why it got better for us in 1988. Mayor, uh, uh, Mr. Randazzo was the mayor then, but it, it uh, took some uh, some things out of that original agreement, which would could have hurt the day in the long run. But it, as it stands, with the way think power costs have gone, it's really helped us. So, and we've been blessed with that. The way that's gone as far as us being protected with it. One other thing on this, and again, this resolution here. This is only for this particular transaction. Correct? That's it. That's this is only the only that. thing that we're going to. You'll have the power to do this one on your own. Yeah. Correct? They, they have, FERC has to approve this. They haven't okay. done that yet. However, for them to approve it, I will have to sign a document yeah. acknowledging this transfer. And at that point, once you do that, this is basically done. It's done. Okay. That's correct. All right. The wording in this is got my attention. It, it really did. Uh, just simply, you know, saying things like any and other all agreements, documents, instruments. Later in it, it says, you know, the mayor is hereby authorized to, you know, execute any other such documents that he deems in his sole discretion necessary. You know, things like that are, are just kind of red flags to me. Not to say that you would ever do anything that hurts Fidelia, because I know that you won't. I think that, that would not be an issue. However, just like you said just a moment ago, you may not always be the mayor, you know, 5, 10, so forth and so on. So the, please don't take that as questioning you, but decisions that are made by resolution are in perpetuity. So that carries on to whomever is next. Those things kind of raise, you know, just question marks for me. And I know that it's legal speak, and I know, you know, these are things that have to be put in, because I know you drafted it and it's not nope. it's not in any way you I know did, uh, negative not, to anybody i did not draft it okay not any way negative to anybody i reviewed it um it's just it draws a question for me um and you know to learn that y'all have been kind of talking about this for the last three months yet we've just learned about it um you know, I think that as the board that needs to make the decision on something like this, even if it seems minuscule, when we just get a two-page document that says words like any and all and at his sole discretion and those things, it, it makes someone like me wonder, well, I mean, especially, for example, in uh, three, 
in, in part three on here, it, it says that we are ratifying, confirmed, and approving anything that you have done or will do. Well, we don't know. So I think that, you know, I would have felt a lot more comfortable had we, we known when it began three months ago that this was something that was brought up and, and just kind of brought into the loop rather than right here at the end saying, we need to get this done, we need to get it done right now because FERC has to approve it. As the, as the body that has to vote on something like that, I think information really squashes that fear. You, do, you, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Without, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, Ms. Dory, but I think it does go <coughs> to a question of trust on this transaction. What this does, I've explained, we have attorney's firms who are very, very intelligent are attorneys that's have drawn all this, doc, doc, this documentation up. Mm -hmm. yeah, to me, yes, I think it does question it. This is my job, my responsibility for this transaction. Mm -hmm. This does not, just by you approving a resolution, it, it's, that resolution says all that. Anything that I have to do, and I'm not gonna sign anything without McClinchy, Stafford, and George looking over it, that it relates strictly to this transaction. So yes, I think it does the fact now, we were told we couldn't go out and discuss that with anybody. If this got out, when they were in the process of negotiating with these things, I'm not going to be that one that's going to muddy that up and contact y'all and tell each one of y'all what that is. That is very serious business. I'm sorry. But we did the work. We started doing what our responsibility, my job, was to do the work to protect the day. I've got it. We did it. It's done. I'm asking y'all for to approve the resolution to only sign this application for FERC. That's what I'm asking for. Now, if you have a problem with the verbiage, I'll let you talk to counsel or call McGlinch Stafford. I'll let you talk to them now. I'll give you their number. If you want to call them, if you don't want to vote on this tonight, that's fine. But it, <laughs> I do feel like it is a question of that because I'm very specific in saying I'm only going to sign for the town what we talked about tonight. Nothing more, nothing less. And I appreciate the offer that you made. My point is, is that offer right. should have been made. Hold on. My point is that offer okay. should people, have been whoa. made prior to two, two voting on the matter tonight. That is my only point. I appreciate the offer that we can call and talk with counsel. We can call and talk to the other attorneys that worked on it. That would have been great information to know two weeks ago so that we had the time to do that before executing a document that uses words like any and all at the sole discretion of ratifying past discussions and decisions and discussions and decisions moving forth because you mean I have questions like did the sale of the property include all contracts conveyances and conditions was our contract held intact as far as our contract of uh, the hydroelectric contract, these are questions that any, if this were a business, if we sat on the board of directors of a business, we would have these questions before right. executing a document that says that one person has sole authority to, to do these things. While this document may simply be, and probably is, and you explained actually is, only for the relicensing with FERC, Prior to coming in here and, and see, there was no cover letter, there was no email sent, there was just this two-page document which uses words like giving the authority to execute any and all documents at the mayor's sole discretion, ratifying what has been done and what will be done. Those are important words that, as we have seen in the past, can be interpreted differently down the road not saying that you would this is not saying that i don't trust what you have done this is not saying that i don't believe you have amassed a staff of people who are fantastic at their jobs but as we have seen in the last couple months we don't know what tomorrow brings and who will be sitting in that chair in a week from now if something <coughs> were to happen to you by signing a document like this without knowing all information ahead of time we could be signing over the rights that we were not giving the full education of. I, I'm to telling the next you, Ms. Doray, you were not. I'm telling you, we spent money with the with the professional law firm that's handling this, that knows it. Who do you want to call that you can call? Say, oh, make me feel better. Who do you want to pay to do Mr. that? Mayor, We've done if that. I, if Council, I might, go ahead. If I might. I got into this about May 8th when I started talking with the attorney lady in Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. and that's when I got this document. Mm -hmm. You know, when I looked over this document, 
and it's typical overkill by a large law firm. <laughs> mm -hmm. However, I've, I've looked at it, and the, the essence is what's being approved is for the town to sign the application as a co-licensee to reissue the right to run the hydro plant mm -hmm. by Catalyst and the town. I mean, that's it. That's what, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And all of this stuff in there, I'm assuming that the attorney in Baton Rouge drafted this in accordance with what she knows about what FERC wants right. in things. Mm -hmm. And I looked in here and there's what it says in essence, if you take all the language out of there, is that the mayor, anything that he talked about with them and agreed to with them, only having to do with getting the license reissued, not in the name of Catalyst and a bank in New York somewhere as the trustee of some unnamed partners. They're getting them out, so it's going to be the town and Catalyst. And so anything he did up front was being approved only to do that job. Right. Can't do anything else. Mm -hmm. So all the extra language about documents and this and that, it has to be in order to satisfy FERC to get the application in just Catalyst in the town. I mean, he can't change anything else. Fantastic. That's it. Given that information, I vote to approve. I make the motion to approve. I thought we said that earlier. Second. Alderman McCoy, you had a question, though, before we go further. I mean. Yeah, I, my, my question was behind all the one door is, uh, and her concern with the wording. If, if the wording, one or two words in it's that document, uh, but then, but then the heavy impact, counsel, do we, do we not have the, uh, to suggest to the, take the verbers out? Alderman McCoy, I wouldn't change words from a from a, a seasoned <laughs> professional lawyer to someone other than what they said. I'm sorry. I just, I mean, I don't have. I'm, I'm trusting them. They're being. We're being. We're paying them to use their professional ex expertise on what to say. I certainly don't. And nobody else sitting in this room, other than maybe uh, our 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 counsel should question their wording or verbiage on this thing because they're representing us and we should trust what they're doing for us. <clears throat> I think we regard that, whatever he's saying, I think we pretty much regard that. Things like being a type, by the name. I think the document is, is okay. It, it, it should pass by majority. But okay, sure. Yeah. Just for everybody to feel okay, I'm, I'm all about the resolution. Let's, let's do the resolution. As a matter of fact, uh, the last issue, we, last month, we had already, already discussed the issue. And then we said that the, the mayor would have the autonomy to make these decisions, but just let us know. And we all agree as a whole, we're unanimous that if he just, if the mayor would just let us know where he went and where he had to do, then we were all fine. So now we're looking at this document in, in black and white. We're looking at a document in black and white. That's basically, basically asking us to trust the mayor to judge. No, I don't think we talked about that last month. And, 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 and
I think he's I don't think he's on the right same page on that. Okay. So tell Did him I hear on the door and make a motion to Yeah, there's a motion on the table. Tell him we good. And and second was made by Alderman Probst. If there's no more discussion, are y'all ready to vote? Okay. You want to do roll call? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All, uh, our clerk, Mr. Rashawn, is going to do roll call on the yeas and nays. <clears throat> y'all bear with me on this. Motion before the board by Alderman Doray, seconded by Alderman Probst is to approve a resolution to authorize the town of Vidalia to execute and deliver to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission an application for the partial transfer of the license for the operation of the Sydney A. Murray Jr. Hydroelectric Station and to authorize the mayor to enter into and execute the application and any out documents necessary in connection therewith. Alderman Betts. Four. Alderman Doré. Four. Alderman Gardner. Four. Alderman McCoy. Alderman McCoy. Four. Been plus me my phone on you. Alderman Probst. Four. Mayor, let the record show the yeas are five, nays zero. The motion passes. Okay. I do want to assure the people of the day that this this is if anything is going to help our help our town. I really do. I believe that. So. Do I entertain a motion to adjourn? I make that motion. Motion made by Alderman Probst, second by Alderman Garner. All in favor say aye. Aye. Adjourn.